So today's message is called Deliverance with Understanding about Intrusive Thoughts, Curses, and Mental Illness. How many voices do we hear around us every single day? Voices include everything that we're taking in through our eyes and our ears. And we live in a time where we are surrounded in a broken world with tons of data in our eyes, voices in our ears. And now we have to divide them all. What is true? What is false? What is intimidation? And what is a complete facade? Just all put together for us to see. So the world, including many believers, are living in a false comfort. It's not God comfort. It's a false comfort. We make our own rules, even with God. Real God comfort is found in his word. So I'm going to read today from Psalms 12. Help us, Lord, for principled and godly people are here no more. This is how David felt in his day. And I'm sure many of us feel like that today. Faithfulness and the faithful vanish from among the sons of men to his neighbor. Each one speaks words without use. Think about that. Words without use or worth or truth with flattering lips, a double heart, deceitfully they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongues that speak proud boasting. Those who say with our tongues, we prevail, our lips are our own to command at our own will, who is Lord and master over us. Imagine. Now will I arise, says the Lord, because the poor are oppressed, because of the groans of the needy. I will set him in safety and in the salvation for which he pants. The words and promises of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in earthen vessels, an earthen furnace purified seven times over. You will keep them and preserve them, O Lord. You will guard and keep us from this evil generation forever. There's evil in every generation. The wicked walk or prowl about on every side as vileness is exalted and baseness is rated high among the sons of men. So, Psalms 12 to me is a spiritual hearing and vision test. Whenever I read that Psalm, I know that God wants me to check my vision and my ears according to his words. Verse six tells us the words and promises of the Lord are pure words like silver. Silver in the Bible means redemption. Amen. We should value the word of God more than any gemstone, precious metal, any form of wealth. True wealth is found in the word of God. And verse eight says, the wicked walk or prowl about on every side. They exalt vileness. Do we see that today? Absolutely. And baseness is rated high. Baseness is a lack of moral principles, and it is bad character, and that's what they exalt among the sons of men. These are people we're speaking about, people that are speaking, people that want us to listen. They want us to take it in within the temple of God, so we have to guard what we look at and what we listen to. These words they can become beliefs that are formed within us as we take it in. This is where our free will choice comes in. Will we believe it or not? Will we take it in or not? Look at it or not? Listen to it or not? 
So they enter, these words enter our thoughts and they occupy a great space in our mind. And we know that all of us is supposed to belong to God. But this occupies great real estate. And around us, we have all this propaganda today. We hear it everywhere we go. All we see, all we hear, they wanted us to speak it out from our mouth. So the question is, what is rolling around in your mind? I want you to pay attention to this this week. Pay attention to your thoughts going over and over sometimes. Don't have to be afraid of anyone's words because we belong to the word made flesh. But the enemy right now, he's got a new game going on. It's called intimidation. They're trying to bully us. They're trying to make us fear. All of this stuff entering our ears, eyes, they want us to speak about it. We know that words hurt. We also know that God heals. There is life in the power of our tongue. It can be life. It can be death. We have to choose life. Amen. Our spiritual speech should be prayers and petition, goodness, kindness, and the attributes of God. And our spiritual security, what we should be hearing in our ears, is the divine promises of God in purity and in perseverance because we are paying attention to our race. So let's take a trip back to the garden, okay? The serpent is speaking. Why do we listen to him? Why do we still listen to him? I want you all to understand that many of the voices in our own minds are disguised as his. He disguises his voice as ours. There is God's voice, there is our voice, and there is the enemy's voice. Pay attention and pray for discernment. We do not want to entertain any thought that is not in agreement with God. So the word tells us the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. The roaring is in his voice. We need to recognize the voice of the enemy by understanding how we were created, how we work as a spiritual being, even in a corrupt world with our spirit, our soul, and our body. Holy Spirit in us is the boss. Our personal spirit should be the boss under the boss, the ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. If you are not daily eating the word, your spirit man is literally malnourished, like the pictures of the starving children you sometimes see. We have to let the word play in our ears. I tell people all the time, turn your Bible app on, faith comes by hearing. We also have to read it. Fill the lamp of our eyes with fresh spiritual oils and meditate upon the words in our mind. Our soul, the mind, will, and emotion is to be controlled by our spirits. And this is what our message is about today. How do we spiritually take control of our souls? And what happens when our spirit does not have control of our souls. Our soul will absolutely side with our flesh instead of our spirit. In Psalms 128.1, it says, Blessed is everyone who hears, who fears the Lord, reveres and worships the Lord, who walks in his way and lives according to, to his commandments. When we fear the Lord, knowing he is keeping and protecting us, we will have the abundant life that God promised to us. Amen? What about our bodies? Our bodies take the brunt of warfare. Let's talk about our ears. 
Psalms 49. Hear this. Again, God is saying, hear this. All you peoples, give ear all you inhabitants of the world. In this Psalm, David is saying that people are foolish, that they're inward thoughts are about them. What are we leaving, you know, of our wealth to the next generation? They call their lands their own, and everything that they do is apart from God. That's David's point. We can do nothing without God. Everything we own belongs to God. David is saying many people think they are still in control, but they are not. And they're not caring for their spiritual inheritance, their temple, what we take in with our inward thoughts. They're not caring about their dwelling place in eternal life. Amen? Let's talk about our eyes. The first mention of our eyes is Genesis 3.5. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened. And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And Judges 21-25, in those days, today, there's no king in Israel. Every man did what they thought is right in their own eyes. We do this. And I believe if God's eyes are described like a flame of fire, that our candles are to burn all this junk up and not let it enter us. Blessings and curses are spoken by the mouth. They're heard in the ears. The blessings and curses in Deuteronomy were spoken from the mountaintops. We are to hear and speak the things of heaven. Our minds are in the process of being transformed. And if you find that your mind gets filled with the stuff of the world and the junk going on around us, that should be a clue. Renew your mind in the word of God. So our mind, it's not just the voices of the day. It's also the dreams and visions of the night seasons. Scripture says God will speak to us in the night seasons. Yet many people have evil speaking to them in their dreams and in their visions. Our minds are not just the voice of the day. We carry everything going on around us, everything we've taken in from culture, even from our family. So today, this is how the world sees normal. Anxiety, depression, hindrances, stagnation, people just trying to keep up with it all, and so much intimidation. Now, I want you to be aware of intimidation. I'm not kidding. This is the enemy right here. This is his new game. The intimidation we are witnessing today has a mission, and it is intentionally to mess with our minds, bring confusion, and steal our peace. Does that line up with God's word? Absolutely not. We are the sheep of God's pasture, not the pattern of the world. We have to watch for the patterns that the world wants to keep us in. Do we understand what the scripture means? As a man thinks, so is he. We are what we believe. We can have what we believe. We carry all of this stuff in the strongholds of our mind. What is a stronghold? I'm going to give you an example. A man gets a thought. My wife hates me. Then he believes it. Blocks go up. Brick by brick. Every brick has the intention of making a wall. The husband who keeps this going around in his mind that his wife hates him is now behind a wall. And it doesn't matter even if it was ever true if his wife hated him. As long as he believed that thought, the enemy 
got in. So the real estate that belongs to God is now occupied with walls. God doesn't like walls. He breaks every foundation not of his. Then the wife notices her husband is treating her differently. She reacts differently also. So she takes the thought that her husband is rejecting her and she starts to put up bricks in the wall. The walls of protection. We think we're protecting ourselves. These are strongholds and we hide behind these walls when we don't know how to deal with things. So the intrusive thoughts of our minds, this is their mission and the bricks continue. The husband will add on hatred, distrust, depression, strife, confusion. He'll even begin to wonder how much he's missing out on outside of his married life. The wife, she's going to keep building too because the enemy got that hook. She's going to feel abandoned. She's going to feel unloved. She'll probably blame herself and on and on. And strongholds, these strongholds that we build, they absolutely get passed on to our children. The enemy is always after the next generation. So let's change this around. The husband gets a thought. His wife hates him. The husband asks himself, was that thought a blessing or a curse? If it's a curse, bring it to God. Repent. Renounce it. Let's protect God's family his way, the way he's teaching us. Amen. And ironically, the first question in the Bible was God asking, who told you that? These strongholds will change our lives. They will change our habits. They can change our future and our family's future. Here's another example. We're told not to be anxious for anything. So if we do not catch these thoughts and bring them to the obedience of Jesus Christ, what happens? We stuff it all. We stuff it all within us, feeding our strongholds. So now we can understand why Satan is after our minds. Now we have to understand why Satan wants to hurt us as children, as young as possible, and not warring for our minds, families, and children. He wants us to stuff it all within, because when we're young, we don't know what to do with this stuff, so we stuff it, and that forms a habit, a habit we will carry throughout our lives if it's not broken. Jesus Christ is our head. We are to have the mind of Christ. God is to be in control of our minds. Knowledge of good and evil was never to replace our relationship with God. We have to hear the truth from the word of God to overcome the darkness. So here is a world that's filled with people. We all want to be loved. We all want to be understood and nurtured. But most of us won't make the Bible our lifestyle. Normal to a supernatural creation is much more than thinking about how to take care of our families. They're God's family. And for some, it's how do we get what we want? Or how do we get our own way? Our thoughts go throughout us. They circle round and round, just like Israel in the wilderness, 40 years around a circle. Why? God had to change their mindsets. He's still doing this with us today. He knew if he did not change their slave mentality, that they would return to Egypt. That's why he took them the long way around, 40 years or I think it was a 13-day journey. And then in the promised land, while he prepared them around the circle, in the promised land, they had to overcome their giants and clear out the land. This is us as believers. So look at Judas, the apostle of Jesus Christ, the treasurer, if you may. Yet it was also his job to buy supplies. And in doing so, I'm sure he dealt with people that may or may not have been following Jesus. And it is my personal belief that Judas 
thought Jesus was the Messiah about to be made king. Many of Jesus' followers wanted him to be their king, especially after he was feeding the multitude. But they had no understanding of the spiritual aspects that Jesus came and the atonement was to be made for the sins of all creation, all the generations after them. And now Jesus is telling the apostles, they're going to put me to death. What? What do you think that thought could do in Judas's mind? We also see Jesus say to Peter, get behind me, Satan. When our thoughts do not line up with the word, we're opening doors to trouble. We don't want to open those doors. God said, be anxious for nothing. So what if I don't bring what's stressing me out to God in prayer? What if I want to think about it for a while? What, what if I want to speak about it? What if I want to get on the phone and call my friends and tell them, you know, what happened to me, how they feel, because I want them to join me in my feelings. And what if I'm hurt? And what if I want to deal with these things in my own way? It's sin. That's exactly what it is. It's sin. You've entered into the realm of I. The enemy loves to twist unrepented thoughts not brought to God and insert his pride. So pay attention to that. Sin opens doors that leads to demonic activity. Many times I've told people that the word occult means hidden. Satan hid in the snake in the garden. He hides in the thoughts that he sends. He uses objects, technology big time today, to bring sin to our attention, to capture our eyes and our ears. The enemy wants these strongholds fed, and he wants them and armored. We use our own armor, unfortunately, with our mouths. I will never, she always, he doesn't, making vows, making oaths, and the walls that should be falling down are being fortified. With the supernatural ability that we have in our words, the power of the tongue can bring life or death. These are not just words. This is reality. The enemy knows it. He knows God said, let there be. And it was. He always wants to mess with our thoughts and our speech, what we take in, because if we'll believe it, it's exactly what we're going to have. Sometimes we will open the stronghold door with our own thoughts. Maybe I was wrong. What's happened to our relationship? More thoughts, more actions, more deeds will be sent. And boom, we shut the door again. But now behind the wall, we're condemning ourselves. And the enemy loves to join us. Jesus said to Judas, do what you must do. Satan entered Judas. Judas thought he was right. He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. I, my own opinion, I have often wondered if Judas thought if Jesus saw all the temple guard coming at him, that he would have defended himself and declare himself as king, but he didn't. Jesus humbled himself even to death on the cross. If Satan can enter an apostle, how can the church tell us a Christian cannot have a demon. I wonder where that thought truly originated from. But for me, the answer is clear. Jesus cast out demons and told us to do the same thing. But many believers today believe that the enemy is not after the family of God. Who did Jesus cast the devils out of? It was the people that came to him for ministry. These were people that were following him, just like us. Yet Jesus told Peter that he had prayed for him because the enemy wanted to sift him, sift his faith. Peter still denied Christ, but he came back through repentance and relationship. A Christian cannot be possessed because of the Holy Spirit living within us, but absolutely can be demonized. Because when the enemy is giving us a hard time, and when, when we recognize it, 
the Holy Spirit in union with us is the one that will kick him out. Amen. Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I dread? The Lord is my refuge and my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We do not ever have to fear bringing the thoughts, the actions, and the deeds going on within us to the Lord. Why? He already knows it. He's waiting for us to bring it all to him. He's a good father. We come dirty every single day and he cleans us up. We're his children. Psalms 28, five and six. For in the day of trouble, he will hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his tent will hide me. He will set me upon a rock. How can we hide within the Lord if instead we used our free will to make a choice to hide in our strongholds with the enemy. This is not normal for a believer. This is normal for the world. We are to pull down everything that exalts itself against the word of God. Every doctrine of man that goes against God's word was inspired by wrong thought. How do I know this? Look what happened in the Garden of Eden. It hasn't stopped. When we think about God's way of operating, we are protecting our temples. Now, we have to understand the rest of our body is depending on our head to guide us. It's not just for a mind thing. It's for a mind and heart thing. Let the word of God come alive within you. Let his light from his word overtake your entire being. That's the, that's the number one commandment right there. Love him with all of us. He wants to fill us because he knows he's protecting us. You know, how many, how many young people today have seen people on YouTube or something like that, you know, just smoking legalized whatever or taken whatever or drinking and the thought enters oh, that's normal that's what you should do at that age and then they do it catch that thought bring it to the obedience of jesus christ because it doesn't line up with his word there's a video up on youtube of a woman her life was going great all of a sudden boom crazy entered ends up in the hospitals ends up on medication for years until jesus set her free these crazy demons they enter these strongholds our mind is supposed to belong only to god not all mental illness is demonic but i know the roots of it is because we were created to live in this world with no sickness at all mental illness is not only demonic it also mixes with injuries, with genetics, and with medical issues. But many of these things are also brought on in the spiritual, even generational. I think believing the words of the enemy, the lies of even the people that we listen to, the lies of what we see and what we believe, they end up covering our strongholds in very thick roots, roots of rejection, and bitterness, for example. And these roots leave these doors open and deeper sin wants to enter like fornication. I have been doing deliverance for 25 years. And these two issues, I believe, are the easiest way to see your future change or where someone can end up becoming tormented and demonized. We have to watch the thoughts in our minds. Amen. So think about it. Is there a chance that maybe husband may find comfort in the arms of another and his, his wife as well? If people do not know how to deal with these thoughts, what will happen to the children? And then watch how divorce will run through these family generational bloodlines. Many believers today also believe that there can be no ancestral generational curses because Jesus said, he became a curse for us. Thank God he did. Because when he said, it is finished, he meant he and I, he and you 
are going to clear the land together, kick the generational ancestral patterns out that we see in our lives. Who trained you to think the way that you do? Think about that. Who trained you to think the way that you do? And then ask yourself, who trained them? How far can this go if it's not dealt with? Healthcare in America alone is in the billions of dollars. And what do they have to offer? Secular counseling and medication. I am sorry to say that in 2019, psychiatrists had the highest rate of suicide of every profession in the United States. And they called it psychiatrists' invisible illnesses. We are spiritual beings. Amen. And thank God we believe in God. I believe that God created science, but man has found comfort outside of God. I absolutely know from my own testimony that there is a time and a place for doctors and medications, but it is not my first place to look. I go to God knowing that he already paid the price for my healing. I, I seek him. How are you going to bring healing into my being? What do I have to do, Lord? Sometimes it's praying with the elders, being anointed with oil, getting deliverance. And seriously, when you get delivered, that usually leaves a person healed. But there is a place for doctors in medicine. If that is how I sense God wants to bring my healing about. How many people are on some kind of drug, mind-altering drugs. Let's just look at the children. Six million children were diagnosed with ADHD. Four and a half million were diagnosed with behavioral disorders. Four million were diagnosed with anxiety. Two million were diagnosed with depression. But three out of every four children between the ages of three and 17 have a combination of depression and anxiety. That is 73.8%. And one out of two have an additional behavioral disorder diagnosis. That information is on the CDC website under children's mental health. These statistics only cover those that have received treatment. So those numbers leave out those that do not. We have to teach our children to unburden themselves by showing them how to give it all to the Lord through the word of God. If you're anxious, if you're fearful, go in the concordance, teach them how to read from the concordance all the scriptures on fear and anxiety. We can even do it on Google. Suicide rates are seriously climbing in children. How many times have the thoughts come in? Parents, we blamed our parents for everything. We blame our teachers, blame our bosses, our pastors. It's so easy to blame somebody else when you're in a stronghold within your own being, where you think you're protecting yourself. This is exactly what Adam and Eve did. And it's still happening today. Within the stronghold, we think we're protected. We think we are right, but actually we're blind and we're wrong. God is crying out to us to cry to him. He wants to set us free. So how can we as adults train our children in the way they should go if we're blind to the strongholds that are within us. Many adults will not go for treatment because they don't want this stuff on their permanent record. People can, be, can come to a ministry, be set free with no medical records, just a video of how God set them free. And that's a seed to sow. So others can know that freedom is available. And the statistics also show that one out of every five people in church today are dealing with some form of mental issue. The stats also go on to say that it's not just family. It's also community, factors, poverty, and culture. We need to recognize our enemies and train our children 
to do the same. And as a family, bring it to the word and allow the Holy Spirit to train our hands to war. I mean us warring with God. And here's another question. What are you fantasizing about? Fantasy is a weapon of the enemy. Fantasy turns our thoughts to overtake our imaginations. I believe our imagination is a chamber of imagery for how we relate to God and heaven within us. How do we identify a stronghold inside of us? If you have fear, but there really is nothing to be afraid of, some people are so in this stronghold that they're afraid to leave their homes. But God did not give us a spirit of fear. In godly counsel, God will reveal the root of that fear and tear the whole building down. What if you believe something like, oh, nothing ever goes right for me? How many people have said that? This can turn into a stronghold. If we believe it, you will have what you believe. But God knows why and where this mess started in the first place. And he is here for us to destroy its foundations. Some people come to ministry. I can't stop watching porn. You need deliverance because this has now gone far beyond thoughts to sin. It will change your future without deliverance. They're out of order scripturally. They're not trusting in God. We are to pull down everything that exalts itself against the word of God. JesusTodayMinistries.org we are here to minister and to pray with you right in the comfort of your own home or your office. If you are seeking counseling, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, if you feel that there is a block or you're experiencing hindrance in your blessings, please know that God cares about you and all that concerns you. Hi, my name is Peggy Golden. I am a pastor and I have a master's in Christian counseling. God has made a way for people all over the world to receive counsel, healing, and deliverance through the use of technology right in your own homes. God heals, saves, and delivers his people every hour of the day. There is no distance for God. If you do not know God, if you are seeking him, or if you have found yourself in a situation that you need help getting out of, please know nothing is too hard for God. Please visit my website at jesustodayministries.org. You can get to know more about me there. And please remember to read the testimonials of what others have experienced by contacting this ministry. There is no fee, but you are able to make a donation. For those who are in the States as well as international clients, we can use voice or video chat on Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or Viber. I look forward to praying with you and all that God will do.